welcome to another edition of the Get With It podcast. I almost forgot for a minute there what I was doing. <laughs> Today we have none other than the fabulous Tony Cunningham. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Through all of our equipment. With our big old headphones on. What's up, girl? What's happening? Um, other than taking over the world, you. Girl, listen. Somebody got to do it. <laughs> I mean, we can't sit back and wait. No, we got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. We got to do it. Okay, so tell everybody listening and watching mm-hmm. all about Tony. Oh, my goodness. Tony. Well, I like to start off by telling everyone I know that I am my mother's only child. My mama's only child. As I said, my mother. I, I heard you. Mm-hmm. I got you, girl. I, mean, I have brothers and sisters, <laughs> but I am my mother's only child. Um, and born and raised Columbus, Ohio. Oh, okay. Love it. Tried to leave once. And then. Tried to go where? I was going to move to Atlanta, girl, back in the 90s. It was the party time. Yeah. So was. I was going to pick up and go. Single, no kids. And then I went, um, was walking the halls at my church and met the man who would ultimately become my husband. So then instead of moving, I got married. What? I know, right? (laughs) Cause I'm not married now. (laughs) So detoured and did that for a little while. All right. A little detour. Um, But in the meantime, I did build, start to build a career here after I figured out like who I was in my thirties and started to build a career. And so I worked um, for 21 years in government. Right out of high school. Just so we're clear, she started when she was 10. Yeah, right. <laughs> right out of high school, though. I did go to work in go- state government. Um, that was back in the day when you didn't need a degree. My cousin called and said, hey, my boss said, do I know any good people? Because um, they're hiring. And I went down to the attorney general's office and had an interview. And the next thing you know, I worked for the attorney general's office. Damn. Right. You go, girl. At 18. At 18. So I did that. Um, worked for the AG for 11 years, then went to the Public Utilities Commission and worked there for 10 and got in the utility space when it was all hot with electric choice and gas choice <laughs> and apples to apples charts and all kind of craziness. And um, and then I moved all the way up to working for one of the five commissioners because, you know, the Public Utilities Commission has mm-hmm. commissioners. And then when he retired, I... Um, Got recruited by AEP. Oh, I thought you were going to root peace out. Well, kind of, sort of. I went to AEP. Okay. And uh, worked in regulatory for AEP for about five years, four or five years. But, you know, I loved it. I loved the exposure and the opportunity, but I, my heart was not there. And it became obvious that my heart was not there. And um, But I was doing a part of the work that was not directly related to my job, but I was soaring in that area. And I realized what my real passion was and my real gift. And so um, I wanted to leave and I had mapped out this whole plan that I was going to leave whether I had any money or not. Oh, damn. I wouldn't advise people to do that. (laughs) But I did it. I was like, I'm quitting my job. Um, This organization that I was leading on the side, I was the president of the American Association of Blacks and Energy at the time. And so they had decided that they were going to bring the national conference to Columbus, Ohio. So I was conference chair. So I said, okay, as soon as I, this conference is done, that's going to be my swan song and I'm going to leave AEP. And one of my mentors at the time who was in the company said, well, I need you to pay attention to some announcements that are going to be made by our then CEO, Mike Morris. I said, announcement? She said, yeah, just keep watching AEP TV. And ultimately, Mike Morris, that was uh, probably in the beginning of the year in 2010. Um, Mike Morris, by April, announced a voluntary severance because they needed to trim the head cut, head count by 5%. And so they had this package they were offering, right? Like two, year, two weeks for every year worked, 18 months of health insurance. We won't contest your unemployment if you want to file because they had to shed. Wow. And I said, ooh, I can leave with no with money now. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. And I pushed the button. My boss was like, are you sure? Yes. Because everybody who were at retirement age or had 40 years in, right. that, that was a golden package for them. So they were all waiting for a package so they could push the button. Then here I am, the youngin' in the group, and I pushed the button too. <laughs> so I went and started my own business. Um, and that was cool because I had been working for someone else ever since I was like 14 or 15 years old. 
So I started my own company and did that for a couple of years, consulting, image and dress and personal professional development, image consulting. That's what I thought. Um, and got a couple of great contracts, one of which was at the Columbus Urban League, helping with their workforce development um, department. Okay. So I go in, I'm like, I call it a consultant, and um, the president and CEO, Stephanie Hightower, was like, I need you to come over here, help me rebuild. I'm like, cool, I come in as a consultant, I have a business. Two months in, she's like, you know you need to just take this job. I said, I can't take the job, I have clients. <laughs> she's like, girl, come on in here. <laughs> come on so I took the job and went in as director of workforce and did that for a couple of years and then ultimately moved up to be the vice president of the organization and over all the programming did that for a couple of years and then it was time to move on so I transitioned from there and as I was transitioning Perscolis came calling and so Perscolis um, which is where I work now is a national nonprofit with eight sites across the country Columbus being one of them and I run the Columbus office, and we do IT training, certification, and then job placement. But it's just more than that. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot. We, we actually help individuals who are in some form of transition, typically unemployed or underemployed, um, to get access to the skills needed to get in the game as it relates to tech. Okay. And to launch tech careers, not just find a job, but get certifications and start down that path of, you know, getting certifications or degrees or whatever you choose to do. But getting in, getting those digital skills and getting in the game. Um, and it's a game changer. It changes the trajectory of someone's life right. to go from a pre-training income of nine to ten thousand dollars annually um, to within 15 weeks, thirty five, forty. That's game changing. Right. And so um, it took me back to my first love, which is workforce development and building people. And you get to do it. And I didn't understand this tech space when I walked into it. I just was coming to do workforce development. I was like, I know workforce development. I know how to help people transition. But then I'm finding out this whole tech world. Tech world. Tech world. <laughs> and I will say that when I started off in workforce development in 2012, tech was not even a part of the conversation. And it evolved. Oh, so okay. credentialing, technology, and how important it has become because of all the connected devices and everybody moving to tech, tech in their businesses and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and so you need more skilled people because right. the jobs are changing and you need people with those skill sets to be able to do the, the jobs of today and tomorrow. And so being in workforce development right now and focused on technology is pretty darn exciting. So when did Prescola start? So Perscolis, um, nationally, they started in 1995. Two Where? guys met on a plane in the Bronx, New York. Met on a plane. Met on a plane, and they were talking about the digital divide and how they could see that communities. Just, just two random dudes. Two, just, uh, like, yeah, chit-chatting. See, one of the um, life coaches <laughs> I met years ago told me not every conversation will change your life, but every conversation could. That's true. You never know who you're talking to. Right. Right. So they're on the plane. They're chit-chatting um, about the, Bron the, the Bronx, New York, and the, how challenging it is for people and the poverty and all of that. And they were like, you know what? This whole tech thing, computer thing is taking off. And these communities aren't even aware, don't even have access. Right. So their thought was, let's get aged out equipment, refurbish it, and give it back to communities of need. So we'll give it to school school districts. We'll give it to households and that. And so they're like, okay, we can, yeah. Because I think they were both kind of in that space anyway. So they were like, okay. So they go and they rent this huge warehouse, start this organization where they accept companies' aged out equipment and refurbish it in these warehouses and push it back out. So they started bringing in people from the community and teaching them how to do it. Okay. Kind of like you're hanging out at the community center. Oh, yeah, come learn how to right. refurbish and what happened is people started getting jobs based on the training that they were getting at the warehouse refurbishing these computers. Holy shit. Right. So they're like, huh, we might have just hit a gold mine. <laughs> Maybe there's something to this training thing. And it started from there and they've built out, I mean, New York, uh, that's our headquarters and they've been around, like I said, since 95. And so, uh, that site is huge, and we just recently did a ribbon coming, cutting in Newark. So in New York, we have the Bronx, Brooklyn, 
and then we have what we call Newark, New York, and Newark, New Jersey. Um, and then they did that for 15 years or so, and then it was, well, do you guys think this will work outside of New York? I mean, you're doing great. Yeah. But that's New York. What about other places? And can you replicate this? And so they had a funder that was willing to go with them to expand outside and see if it, they could replicate the model. And um, Columbus is the first expansion site outside of New York. Okay. Why do you think Columbus? Why do you think they chose Columbus? So I ask everybody. This. I know. Right. And so it really is true about us being a melting pot. It, is. it really is true about us being a giving community a philanthropic community and the other piece is because Perscola stays in its lane and does technology training we don't do case management we don't really do supportive services we are folk we are a tech training provider who happens to be a nonprofit. looking in uh, areas where there are many community-based organizations that can help wrap around the individual is key in Columbus, well, Franklin County has like 6,000 nonprofits. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of crazy. And so when you think about what are their supportive services around, is it a giving community? Um, we're several headquarters, so there's definitely jobs here, mm -hmm. right? And there's going to be a need to skill them up. And um, they came and they did their due diligence. They talked to um, a lot of funders and investors and said, if we brought this here, would you guys support it? And the answer was yes. And in 2012, they opened their doors, graduated their first cohort um, early 2013. Wow. Class one. And now we're on class 30. Cl class 30? Class 30. Damn. Class. Every 15 weeks, you said? So we started off just doing uh, one certification. It was like eight weeks long. So I think the, for years, we ran three or four cohorts a year. Okay. Uh, I got there in August of 2016. By 2017, we uh, we ran six cohorts. Last year, we ran five. This year, we're slated to run nine. And so when I got there, we were on class 16. We were graduating class 16 and starting class 17. Okay. And that was in 2016. So now we are on class 30. Damn. And so we've moved to 10-week engagement for one certification, 15 weeks for two certifications. Okay. So some people come for one, some people come okay. for two. Okay, so you can have the option. Mm hmm Okay. Just total side note here, Darren, you'll get a kick out of this. Darren. And I got I have to bring this up. Remember those two guys on the airplane chit-chatting about this? That's how my husband and I met. We were on an airplane. <laughs> what? <laughs> what about me? Shoot. <laughs> I fly all the time. I haven't met my Prince Charming on the airplane. Mine is probably at the Greyhound bus station. <laughs> so I thought that was so funny what you said. Though. They yeah. were just, we were just sitting on a plane together just chit-chatting. And now we're like 14 years of 15 years of marriage, two kids, See? lots of gray hairs. <laughs> I need to start flying a whole bunch. You just start talking. Just randomly. start talking to people. Just start talking. <laughs> Random. Yeah. 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 So it's pretty awesome. And then I've met great people like you. So Aww. you get immersed in the tech world and yeah. you start finding out all the cool meetups and organizations and groups. The tech community likes to party. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We like to put it down. Yeah. Like, drop it like it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> there's always some. I mean, there's a lot of great learning and cool <laughs> stuff going on. There's a lot of partying. Yeah. Going there's on. a there's a big old drop it like it's hot. In yeah. The tech world. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so Darren, Tony has spoken at our Get Wet It conferences, and everybody loves her. Yeah. And then she made the trip to Cleveland. That was fun. By the way, she brought some real good-looking man to the dinner. Oh. <laughs> so we'll give a shout-out to him because he knows he was good-looking. Good looking man. He knew he was good-looking. Of course. <laughs> he knows who he is. But he's very nice, too. He was very nice. So... Yeah. Yes. So Tony has been around with the Get With It crew. Yes. And um, watched it grow and blossom. And it's actually very awesome. I think when I came in, you guys were on your third conference. Is that third or second? Second. Second conference. But then mm -hmm. to grow to another city already mm -hmm. and that conference be successful. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. What I found in the tech community, though, is there are, there are people that just are like have this get it done 
type attitude. I mean, there's, you know, there's the traditional way of doing things where we got to do our due diligence. We got to check off every box. We got to have 25 meetings and then we're going to have something. We're going to try it and pilot it. We're going to step back and observe it and do the autopsy on it and blah, 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 blah. Whereas in tech community, you're like, yep, we want to have a, we want to have a workshop. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, just put a flyer out and invite a bunch of people. And who's going to speak? Oh, I don't know. I think my friend who knows cloud computing will probably come and say something. Oh, okay, cool. And then it turns out <laughs> to be like this huge, amazing conference where everybody's like, oh, man, I learned so much. And that was cool. And I got my next job because so-and-so was there. And he hired me to come work with. So it's, true. it's really, really cool how organic or how organic Things happen. It just happens. And you're just kind of like, whoa, which is what I try to tell my students. It's one thing to come to us and not know anything about tech and say, I want to get into tech and start a tech job. So part of it is we can give you, we can help teach you the skill set. But in terms of immersing yourself in the tech community, that's going to be something you have to do. Right. You have to seek it out. You have to go to meetups. You have to join organizations. It's part of the job. Yeah. I mean, it's part, it's the fun part. I mean, well, unless you like to code, but I like that part because Mm -hmm. I get to go and bullshit with people. Right. And you get to drink and there's normally free food and booze and Mm -hmm. you get to socialize it up and meet new people and. But then you're having conversations and solving problems Mm -hmm. or learning something new. Like, cause you know, you guys just conversation, cause I'm not a technologist. Neither am I. So you guys just conversations though. It's like. Like, I talk about movies or something. Like, did you see that movie with something? something? You guys are like, so did you she hear about that? She the Game of Thrones. Oh, see, I don't watch Game of Thrones. Oh, my God. I know. I'm an outlier. <laughs> I already know. So, Darren was setting up. We were talking about the season premiere. Everybody knows. This is pre-taped. But the season premiere of Game of Thrones came out on the 14th of April. I heard. Trust and me. All my friends are in it. Yeah. And so Darren and I discussed before you arrived while we were, while he was setting up, I wasn't really I setting mean, up. I mean, the timeline <laughs> on Instagram and Facebook was G-O-T. And at first I didn't get it. I was like, God, why does everybody put got on there? Then I was like, oh, Lord, that Game of Thrones thing is back. I mean, people are cult-like with oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to go back and watch that episode, like, probably two more times before I catch all the hidden messages. But then, girl, you know what? You and I, this is what we're going to do. What? We're going we're gonna to have a binge watching Game of Thrones. Lots of good looking men. Are there? Yes. Now, that'll make me watch. Exactly. That'll make me watch. Because I'm just and not in case that. you didn't know, they were naked, too. <laughs> I'm definitely going to watch. <laughs> Get me. Where's the popcorn and the wine? I need to watch a bunch of naked men running around. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> but it's funny because everybody talks about like code or new, the latest software or something like we talk about games of, Game of Thrones. Right. So even though we look like we're partying and stuff, there's knowledge transfer there's tra- happening. Right. There are connections being made. There, are, you're learning about conferences. You're learning about speakers, podcasts. You just learn in that environment if you're just open to talking to folks, and you know. It helps too because most I don't know if you you find this with your students, but they're introverts. Mm-hmm. And they have a hard time with that putting themselves out there, mm-hmm. kind of part of the techie world, right? But you just got to. And it's like talking to, it's like going out with your friends. So it's not that uptight, like, oh, you must network and call someone for coffee and have an informational. (laughs) No, it's like, oh, go to this meetup. We're all going to buy our own beer. We're going to bring our laptops and we're going to like try to figure it out together. Are you coming to Women, Wine, and Web Design? Darren, is this getting posted before that? Look at me just stop. Darren's like, I don't know. Let me look at the calendar. May 2nd. Darren? Darren's like, I don't know. I don't know, right? 13th. Oh, May 13th. It's after. But happy Mother's Day. Um, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> um, so, yeah, even though we've missed it, and I already blew that part because we can't edit this, um, women, wine, no, yes, women, wine, and web design does the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. So. That's pretty cool. Yes. I will be on my way to Philadelphia for Philly Tech Week. I'm speaking at the Hue Summit, which is a tech summit for women of color in tech. That week, May, 
Yeah, I'm so excited. Okay, well, we'll have to find out how it goes. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's so, really cool. Um, there's so much happening for women in tech. I love it. And um, the focus and just like get with it, you know, making sure that women are in the game, making sure that they feel supported, um, that you know that there are other women technologists out there. Right. Um, I spoke at another event, Diverse Women in Tech, Elevated and Empowered. There were these room full of women who are doing some amazing things in tech, and you would never guess um, things that they've created, apps, programs they've designed. Damn. Right. Who knew, right? Who knew? Because most people are working with their head down. Right. And so pulling them out mm -hmm. and saying, come out and talk to folks and just share with them your journey or share what you're doing so we know you're there. Right. Um, is a big, big benefit because you get so inspired by seeing them. Like, wow. Oh my God, we would love them at Get With It to come and talk at conferences, to come yeah. and do workshops. I met at least three that probably need to to be speakers at Get With It. Oh, my God. Send me their information. I will. I'll make that connection. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, speaking of which, did you hear we're doing Girl Con? Yes. I knew it was, there was some talk about it, but yeah, I heard it's finally confirmed. June 12th. So, Woo. this is May 13th, June 12th, only a month away when this could say, cast air, aired, aired. June 12th. Yes. 150th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th graders. God bless you. We. I mean, there's like a committee. I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to go and what is that statement? Shake babies and kiss hands or whatever. <laughs> Shaking hands and kissing babies. Yeah. That yeah. too. That's what I'm going to do pretty much, I think. I don't think I have any sole responsibility. <clears throat> yeah. Caitlin Burt from CareWorks Tech does. That's pretty and awesome. And Michelle Harris. Them girls, they lead in the charge. So lots of hands on. We're mm -hmm. building some raspberry pies. We're um, doing robotics team. So each session, they they'll build a robot. Wow. Um, they're gaming. I got a gaming you gaming you guy coming in. And they're gonna um, create a video game. Wow. So yeah. How do young women find out about it? So, so funny you should ask that because we just have been getting the word out to schools. Um, I've been reaching out to Columbus Public. We have some connections to Columbus Public, which is really cool. Um, Dublin, because Doug McCullough mm -hmm. has a connection to, to that. Reynoldsburg already um, has a STEM program, so it's very easy mm -hmm. to get in the door there. Um, pretty much blasting it everywhere we can. Have you talked to Lisa Chambers with TechCore? No, but you know what? I need to. You need to connect with her. Yeah, because she probably. Because they've done two girl hackathons. So, um, and they have young women in their program this school year that, um, and she's going to work with some over the summer that will ultimately end up in Prescolis. Oh, oh, well, that's great. After summer. So, we had two young ladies that graduated last June. Went through Perscolas, and now both of them are working. One's making almost 20 bucks an hour on her first job. High school. High school. Graduated high school. High school. And then they came to. And then they came. They were with Lisa and Tech Corps over the summer where they got IT fundamentals credential. Mm -hmm. They came to us and got A plus and Network Plus, so three certs. And then. And boys, they're working. And she's nailing it. Nailing it. So definitely they have, but, you know, they're K through 12. So they would right, have they're K through some 12. young ladies that would probably. Be interested, be interested in, in coming. It's a free event. Oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> that, let me yeah. round up some girls <laughs> in the neighborhood. I mean, because at the end of the day, you know, the schools, I love them dearly. But sometimes they select they do. the cream of the crop. Mm -hmm. And the question is, how do we catch those young ladies that are off the radar and make sure they get an opportunity as well? So we... I don't know if you knew this, but at the conference that we did, the third annual, we had a youth track. Yeah, I yeah. went down there. Okay. And it was 30 girls from community shelters, homeless shelters. Mm -hmm. Like, we tried to get those young ladies that right. weren't influenced by a teacher or, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. just exposing them raw exposure. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a big... Big hit. Mm -hmm. 
So mm -hmm. that's kind of how this whole girl con thing spun up because people are like, well, now you're going to do a conference, right? And you're like, oh. sure. <laughs> I would say the YWCA Family Center. They have young ladies over there probably, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. We were just, we were there maybe a year ago for the, weren't you on, you were on the panel, I think you spoke. You don't even remember probably. I don't. I was there with Angie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Angie's everywhere. <laughs> Um, yeah, the YWCA Family Center and um, getting those young ladies. Um, I know that CMHA has started to try to do more resident services with the Metropolitan Housing Authority. And so they would probably be willing to put some flyers out to because there's young women that live in the complexes that they that they serve. Um, but yeah, there's a way to capture those young yeah, ladies we, in I the wanna, community who want to be able to offer it too. Mm -hmm. So for pros, pros, I can Perscolis. Thank you. I can never say it right. What does so? If somebody's listening to this mm -hmm. and they're interested in it, what is is there a cost associated with it? Of course there is. There's a cost for me. Oh, there's a cost for <laughs> it's at no cost. I don't use the word free. I don't let my students use the word free because nothing's free. Right. So it's at no cost to the participant should they get accepted. Now, there's a robust um, application and enrollment process that everyone goes through. Um, but it's at no cost to them. And it's it's the same as it's the same level of, of service that you re receive at a tech boot camp. Probably more high touch. But this is at no cost. We're a nonprofit, so yeah, we raise the dollars. Your, you, oh, you, you're out there fundraising, scout Me. sponsorships. Me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, anytime you see somebody that's a CEO or uh, executive director of a nonprofit, They're their out. number one job is fundraising. Get getting the <laughs> that, monies. That's the job. Getting the monies. It's getting the monies. Angela Lopez, I'm letting you know, is the CEO of Gatwetta. That that's your job. <laughs> Get the money, baby. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I raise money and, um, the value of the training is anywhere between eight to $10,000 a person and they come in and they go through the process and it's at no cost to them. We give them everything they need to the books, the vouchers to take the certification exams. Uh, they get to use laptops that are, that aren't now we don't give them those, but they do get to use them while they're in class and we have a location. Accessible. They're ex accessible. Um, we do soft skills training and tech training all rolled into one and it's a full time training opportunity. So, <clears throat> cause I know boot camp, so I'm trying to like get, make sure I totally understand. So when they come through, you said there's a robust review interview mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. to get in mm -hmm. and application. Mm -hmm. So how many do you put in a cohort? We only enroll about tw up to 21. Okay, so you have a limit that we have you a limit. do mm -hmm. per cohort. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, because mm -hmm. boot camps don't. They'll take, right, yeah. as many as they can. Yeah. So you're saying there's a limit. There's a limit um, because of class size and um, what, in order to be fair to both the instructor and the students, um, because we are talking about accelerated learning. So we're saying that, you know, you're coming for two certifications, your A-plus and your Network Plus, you will, if it's a 15-week training, by week seven, you will have finished a, a textbook this thick. You will have had exams, hands-on learning, all that. Then you're going for your first certification exam at the National Testing Center in your eighth or ninth week. Then you come back your eighth week because when you start ninth week, you start working on your networking piece so you can get ready for your networking certification. Okay. And so we don't want the classes large and because we're high touch hands on. It's not self-directed learning, it's not online learning. It's in class with an instructor. You have study group. It's like a college course. And um and so we can only t take so many because there's one instructor um and a te teaching assistant. So we want to make sure that folks are getting what they need because the value of these vouchers, we need to know that that we've given you all of the support you need so that when you do go to take the test, there's a high likelihood that you will certify. Okay. Okay. So you know on a budget standpoint what you have to meet per student minus getting the lights turned on and the internet going and whatever else. Having something to sit on. Yeah. <laughs> Chairs. Yeah, that might be nice. Yeah. Maybe a table. <laughs> table to put your sure. computer on. So <clears throat> minus all of those things. You still have a cost per 
student that you've got to hit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're raising money as a nonprofit. And so, you know, you're not uh, stressed at all. are you? (laughs) (laughs) I got my hair colored last week, so you can't really tell how stressed I am. Uh, But I will say that um, Perscolis's mission has been an easy sell, Um, you know, but for the challenges of people opening their wallet as quickly as we love them to, especially corporate donors, um, it's been a great sell. And here's what I like to tell people. So we are a talent solution. So we don't have to come out of just your philanthropic budget just because we're a nonprofit. CIOs have budgets. Marketing departments have budgets. Mm-hmm. Diversity and inclusion officers have budgets. Uh, we have a focus of helping to diversify the tech industry with women and people of color. So 65, 70% of my students are people of color. 30% are women. Last year, 30% of them were between the ages of 18 to 24. So if you have goals around you know, diversifying your workforce and getting some entry-level talent in there that you can grow up. You can partner with us. We can customize training. So you can invest in customized training and have, know that they have exactly the skills that you want when they come out. And so, but for interviewing them for fit, you already know they can do the work, right? Um, and so that, that makes it, um, I won't say easy to raise money, but we have a really, really strong value proposition, And being a talent solution and you hear about all of these tech jobs that go unfilled because of the skills gap, we believe that we provide a solution to that. I mean, yeah, it's like a win-win for every business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get the diversity, you get the women, you get women of color and men of color, correct? Mm -hmm. You get it all. It's like get with it. It's it's. You don't get too many people who say, no, I'm not going to support women <laughs> right. in IT. Right. I mean, it's just not. Right. And our students like, get a job. And, right. And they, they get, so So I, I um, when I first year here, I got the, we got the Biz Tech Nonprofit Award. And one of the things I said in my article was about, it's about impact, right? So you impact a person that impacts a family, which impacts a community, mm-hmm. which ultimately impacts the world. Correct. And so if you think about it as, oh, I'm just training one person, that's not necessarily true because that one person probably represents, once they get stable employment at a livable wage um, with access to benefits and that, you're talking about changing the trajectory of a family's life, not just a person's life. And so that's one of the things that, you know, they talk about doing good while doing well. Companies don't have to sacrifice their bottom line to to do good we can we can make it mutually beneficial because we have so many people in this untapped talent pool that you're going to need because everybody who has the skills are already working right so instead of poaching from each other let's build some new technologists right and put them in the game and put them next to these senior people and grow them up and then it creates loyalty because if i believe you care about me you invest in me you get me a mentor when i come on board you support my stacking my credentials and all that i'm going to stay with you longer Correct. So it's, it, it really is just rethinking how we view talent and respecting the non-traditional pathway to their door. Well, yeah. A computer science degree from OSU is not going to get you any further than getting yeah. your certifications and on top of it having the one-on-one. I mean, think about how many people are probably sitting in a computer science class at OSU. Right. Hundreds. And no soft skills training around no, that because no. people tell us that people end up hiring for skill and firing because of fit. Yes. It, whether it's work ethic, you can't fit with the culture, nobody can tell you anything, you don't want to come to work on time, you don't want to put your phone down. Right. Like those are all things that unfortunately we have to teach. Correct. About why it's appropriate and how it's appropriate so that people know how to show up in the workplace. You got, what, seven, six generations in the workplace now? So you kind of do the package deal with the bow on top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Teach them how to act. Yep. And it's fun and it's great to watch somebody's life change before your very eyes. I just got a text from one of my students who graduated, a woman, who uh, graduated whoop, whoop. Uh, a couple weeks ago. 
and she just landed a job at a major corporation. She's like, oh, my God. Now, she came to us with some experience, some work experience and stuff. I mean, you know, not everybody who's unemployed or underemployed is has absolutely no experience, right? right? But she landed a major role, and she came through our training and worked her butt off. And was like, I'm going to put myself out there. And she took some menial job, but because it taught her some skills that she wanted to learn in IT. At night, she took the night job, but she was really hoping to get this day job with this major corporation. And she just told me she landed it. Wow. She texted me, I got the job. That's awesome. So I'm so excited to watch her career just blossom in tech. So that's how like people will say to me oh, why, you know, you're in Get With It. Like, what does it mean for you to be in Get With It? And I'm assuming you probably feel the same way. It's that being able to help and empower and impact somebody else's mm -hmm. life because somebody did it for me. Right. So I I want to pay it forward, so mm -hmm. to speak, um, where I can help somebody else. Exactly. Make a change in their life for the better, better of themselves yep so whether it be economically or personally exactly it does i mean you know like my my sessions at get wedded were not about tech no wait what but it was about? full oh my god overrun so full <laughs> They were sitting so I on thought, the floor. Darren, they're all sitting on the floor during this. Big D, session. they were sitting on the floor. Oh, <laughs> y'all, I call Darren Big D. Big D, they were sitting on the floor. So yeah. the topic was reboot. Wait, was it the same in Columbus as Cleveland? Mm -hmm. Okay. It was right. reboot, strategies for changing your life and career. And there were so many women in there. And what, what it spoke to to me was there are so many people trying to figure it out. Uh-huh. And I'm still trying to figure it right. out. Right. And that's a constant, right? And then there's this tension. What was interesting to me was a lot of women that spoke up said that they're the breadwinner. Correct. Like they want to do something else, but they really are scared to make the shift because they're the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, but what I really want to do is this or what I'm passionate about is this. But I'm the major breadwinner and I bring the most of the income to the household so I don't get to do right. passion work or I'm trying to figure out how to shift to it but not lose the income that we need to maintain the lifestyle that we set up for ourselves right and that's a that's feeling stuck that's a that's a trapped feeling I mean that's me I mean I'm the breadwinner in our family mm -hmm. and um I want to I want to take over the world I mean there's so many things that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I and I and I you know there's the old adage of do what you love and the money will come but sometimes because you already have a life going you can't wait for the money to come while you do what you love I mean it is true because I've if you do what you love before. oh do what you love and the money will come yeah it's because when you do when you're doing what you love you do it so well and you do it with excellence like it's not even a second thought and so you just it so just when comes. you do something with excellence people will pay you for it right right but you got to figure out how to market yourself correct market what you love to do and then get some clients that are paying. So that takes time. Right. But, or find a job where you can use your top five signature strengths. So oh. there's a, there's a, there's a there you an assessment you can take and it'll give you your top five. And then you find a job where you get to utilize the majority of those strengths every day. And that means you're going to be operating in the zone most of the time. And you do your job so well that people want to pay you well to do your job. But making that transition of what if I went to school to be an engineer and so I can do it, I can do it. I'm doing it, but it's not fulfilling and it's not where my strengths are. My strengths are over here in building people and making them, connecting them to their next and all of that. But that sounds real social like and people don't get paid well in social work. So yeah. then you got this woman struggling because I need to be an engineer because I need to bring home X amount of money and I'm at six figures already and blah, 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 versus I'm going to take the leap over here right, and do this and I may start from scratch and helping women figure out what that transferable thing is in the engineering world that you could do over here and still bring that same knowledge and skill set and make money. We should have like 
a session life skills with Tony. Oh my God, it would be such a great TV show. Wouldn't it? It would be. But that was what Reboot was kind of leading to is let's take inventory of what you do really, really well, what it is you love to do naturally, and figure out can if you can monetize that or if there's a way to find a position in your current company, how do you create a proposal and a pathway to get from over here to over there? So what was the response? People were like, I'm going to figure it out. I gave some steps to reboot, and people were like, oh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put these to use and see if I can figure out how to make this happen. That's great. And it's not an overnight thing, no. right? Because you have to do a lot of self-inventory. You have to do a lot of due diligence, digging, researching. But if you're on the path, and at least, you know, even if you decide, okay, these are three things that I want to do in my role right now. And they're going to be extra, but I want to go to my boss and in my next performance thing or goal setting. Right. I'm going to say, you know what? We got this work. Now you have to be performing in the work they're paying you for. Correct. But we got, th I got this work, but I think I saw you guys are launching a project over here. And I'd love to get on that project team and just lend my voice in this area. Because then they begin to see you in a different light. And then you never know the person that is over that project team that has that department and gets an opening, may pick you up, pick up the phone and call you and be like, you know what, I got an opening coming in my department and, I'm, and I want to see if you want to like jump. Jump. That's how it happens. But people are so, sometimes they're so afraid to take on other work or they're just so bogged down that they don't free themselves up from all the minutia to be open to be able to. Or they don't want to say anything to their boss. There's that too. If it's a culture where that's not appreciated. Correct. But sometimes yeah. it's the culture. Like you work in a culture where this is what's appreciated, not that. Right. They don't care if you bring your whole self to work. They don't care if you're authentic. <laughs> they just want you to hit that number. You could be as fake as a $3 bill, but just make sure you hit that number. That's all they care about. That's all they care about. So, right. And if that's not a culture where you can thrive, then honestly, your job is to figure out your exit strategy. Yeah. And we talked about that in the session too. Like, do, is it time for you to create an exit strategy? You may not be able to just drop the mic and walk out like I did a couple times, but I didn't have anybody but my dog. And I knew me and my dog could move back home to my old bedroom at my mom's house, which is still empty. <laughs> so if it didn't work out, I always knew because I am what? My mama's only child. That's right. I knew I had a bedroom at my mama's house and I was not going to be homeless. So for me to quit a job is different than you with a child and a husband and a mortgage. And oh, a I got two of them things. See? See, y'all was all sassy friends <laughs> when they had kids and stuff. <laughs> now you got two little tax deductions, but uh, so yeah, I mean it's different for every everybody's scenario is different, but the goal is and the journey is figuring all that out right. and then getting to that place where you're living your best life, an authentic life, and you could be one person. Is you and the dog are doing just fine. Though. Me and the dog are having a ball. He's probably mad right now because he hasn't been out today and I came all the way up here to Worthington. So he's probably mad right now. He'll, He'll be all right. It. He'll get over it. What kind of dog? He's a little toy poodle. Oh, my God. So we make up all the time. We fight and make up all the time. You could have put him in your purse. I could have, but he won't sit still at work. He's trying to go around and be the mayor of Priscola's. I'm like, dude, they got work to do. You cannot go be the mayor of Priscola's. Sit down somewhere. So I haven't taken him to work yet because he's just a little, oh, my God, people, they want to play. Let's see if they want it to be my toy. They want... he, how old? He's actually seven now. Oh. But he's still playful. He likes to play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> my kid's so. got a puppy for Christmas. Oh, a puppy. Yeah puppy well see i knew so here's the here's the deal i never had any children lord knew um and i would tell all my nieces and nephews and friends with babies is i'll keep your child once they're potty trained because auntie doesn't change diapers <laughs> and when i got a dog i got him from a rescue because he was already had shots been spayed or neutered and house trained oh so you just right i know myself <laughs> me going through puppy stage mm -hmm. Wouldn't keep the dog. I mean, gave the dog away. Actually, he's my third dog. I did give two of them away. Really? And finally, I got him. And I was like, I love you, Zeke. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit. I'm going to commit to you, Zeke. <laughs> I'm committed. And he's lasted longer than my last two relationships. Oh, see? You committed to the dog. I committed to him. I'm like, Zeke, mommy loves you. <laughs> commit to you. <laughs> I'm committed to you. And all the rest of them didn't work out. But you, me, and you, boo, me, and you. There you go. Yeah, so. I I have a feeling that it'll be me and the dog in the end. Don't say that. Both my kids will be off to college. Well, empty nester. Yeah.
empty now. And I'm sure, you know, Chris will probably piss me off. <laughs> but that just means he goes to the basement. That doesn't mean he leaves. He just goes to the basement. And me and the dog will snuggle. Yeah. And we'll binge watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, Lord. And you'll dress the dog up in costumes? No, but there's a, there's a thought. <laughs> but no it's it's huge and a lot of women are thinking about that too like when you've sacrificed for the family oh yeah and then the kids go and we got this new normal like is that the point where i make the shift so you know you just have to do what's right for you but whatever you do the goal is to get there so that you can die empty of all the gifts and talents that you have you've put them out into the world and you've given and you've You've done what you were meant to do. And sometimes it's delayed. Like, I thought it was delayed. I didn't start living my life like that until after my divorce in my mid to late 30s. And and I watch people who started in their teens and 20s that they're like jamming. And, and, I, and I went for a while thinking that I had waited too late or had missed out. Oh, yeah. You know how you can live a life thinking, shoot, I wish I would have. Then I start thinking, well, wait a minute. I got several good years ahead of me. <laughs> Yeah, and I might as well make them good years. You're just in your 30s. I'm just in my 30s. Exactly. Well, at the time, though. At the time, you were just like, in When you come 30s. out of your 20s and you're still struggling with, I ain't in my 20s no more. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, my God, I'm almost 40 and I haven't done anything monumental in my life. You know, you start having those kind of I changed feelings. careers in my 40s. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I made the leap. Yeah, I was in my 40s when I left corporate. Yeah. So, I mean, it's doable. My stepmom, shoot, she's like 78. She started her own business like four or five years ago. She's booming. Like, she's got more contracts than she can stand. She opened a second office in Florida. And now she's trying to create this legacy and give the building to her grandkids who aren't paying attention. But she's at least trying to. <laughs> and I want to get them in the business because they can take this. I mean, I'm almost 80. I don't want to do this forever. I'm like, you just started. What does she do? She does. Um. Contract compliance for minority, so uh, businesses that get these contracts, like government contracts, and they have to stay in compliance with their minority business requirements and mm -hmm. stuff. She does compliance work for them and train, keeping them on track so they don't lose their government contracts by oh. helping them stay. And just connecting businesses and making sure that minority businesses understand. At 78? Well, she's not 78 yet. She's like 70. Let's see, more 75. She's like 77. Okay. You know what I'll be doing at 77? I'll be sitting on a beach somewhere with a drink. Yeah. And this is like her third business. Yeah, no. No. And she worked. So but she's having a good time though, and it's keeping her young. But she's like, I know I can't do this forever. So good for her. I know, right? But like I just say all that to say it's never Not too sure late. I'll make it to seventy seven or seventy eight at this rate. But I know. Good for her. But she it's never too late. And I mean a thriving business. Damn. Right. So, wow. All right. Well, we need, um, did you see that? Did you see that? What did Big D do? Did what? you see what Big D does? Big D tells me where we are because I keep us on, on schedule. Oh, you do? Yeah, because I have gotten some feedback that people won't listen or they don't care for podcasts that go over an hour long because mm -hmm. they get kind of drifty. I understand. But see, we've been engaging. So people probably could listen to us for hours. But... Darren, what do you think? Have we been, have we gone down a rabbit hole or have we been okay? No. See, Darren keeps us on track. Okay. Big D. Good. Yeah, that's his name. That's I need his, to get him a t-shirt. I do. Now I have to get him a Big D t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the man, the myth, Big D. <laughs> so, all right. Give a shout out to Prescolas. Yes, Prescolas. So if you want to learn more about Prescolas, go to our website. It is amazing. At <laughs> www.prescolas.com. Perscolas, P E R S C H O L A S dot org backslash Columbus if you want to know about Columbus. But we are a national organization, so you can find out all, everything you need to know about our organization there. You can apply online for the training there. Um, just loads of stuff. All of our media, videos, documentaries, all of that is on there if you want to learn about uh, what we do and how we do it. Awesome. And get with it. Hosting first ever girl con in a month. I'm going to come. By the time this is posted. Um, June 12th. And then our conference for the get with it will be the fourth annual 
And it's uh, the, I screwed this up, so Darren will have to fix it. New blueprint for leadership. Hmm. That's the theme. Sounds like I need to be there. (laughs) So that's September 30th. And for fun, you could come to Cleveland. October 28th is their conference. Sure. Yeah. So, because we like to put them like right after each other because I don't like to sleep. Uh, obviously no so, obviously yeah no. so september 30th october 28th what other exciting news do i have i don't know what else do you have oh Perscolis is having an event oh okay is it is it gonna be it's in may may what may 31st okay perfect perfect go may ahead May 31st we're doing our first ever spring fundraising event called tea up for tech and we're doing it during mirrorfield Oh, damn, you're going to – nice. It's going to be ha- It's gonna be fun. We're doing it May 31st at Tartan, um, Tartan Golf and Country Club. We're having an event, reception. You'll be able to play putt-putt, do the golf simulator, have some good food, have some good drinks, learn more about Perscolis. But, yeah, we're doing a fundraiser during Mirrorfield. I'm so excited. It's oh, in the evening exciting. from 5 to 8. So, ideally, that Friday, you come off the course, you come over to Tartan, Hang out with us for a couple of hours and learn about Briscolas for a good cause. Support a good cause. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Pretty cool. All right, Darren, we're wrapping it up. Thanks again, buddy, for stopping by. Thank you, Darren. (laughs) 